right, I'm gonna go and call the speed to order. It's the second end of April, 2024, 3 p.m. We are in the Justice of Peace courtroom at the Rams County Courthouse. Uh, roll call. Commissioner Cheney? Here. Commissioner Casterline? Here. Commissioner Russo? Here. Commissioner Dutnick? Here. Judge Garza? Here. We've got a full quorum. We've got a full quorum. Uh, items for deliberation and work discussion. And we're going to discuss the rebuilding of the aquarium at Rockport Harbor. And it's so nice to see everybody here. So, this is like, yeah, this is stuff that people care about. And thank you, commissioners, for, for making this. I appreciate that. That was a last minute deal. But um, so, I, I call this workshop because if you all remember, sometime last year, I don't remember the date, the month. But we had a presentation where we decided we're going to rebuild the aquarium and we're going to use the, our hot funds um, balance to, to fund it. It's allowed under the statute. And we were going to go, we're going to go forward, we're going to do it. We had to work with an app district for scheduling on when we could start. Well, it was like a couple of weeks ago. I was looking at the drawings. I was like, I really don't like the outside. And so that's why we call this meeting is... If the commissioners, if y'all have get a consensus, are y'all happy with the way it looks? I don't want to settle. We've got a construction project going on now that we've got some lessons learned. And we want to do it right the first time. And that's what we're going to do. I believe Al has a presentation. Oh, and first, I'm sorry, I want to introduce Abella Martinez. She is our, uh, she's with the county attorney's office. Yeah. And she will be uh, our counsel. What was your first name? Adela. Adela. Thanks, everyone. All right. Okay. So I have a PowerPoint, and for all the commissioners, you can have my seat, Mike. <laughs> um, and all the commissioners have a copy, and Judge Garza has a copy. Um, and we're just going to talk about the aquarium, as Judge Garza said. We've learned a lot of lessons in the last year or so. Um, for me, it's just been about six months, but it feels about six years. So we've learned lessons about what we should do, what we can do, really like what we want to do in the future. So I just want to um, take a few moments, introduce myself, El Morales. I'm with Community Development. Um, we have the architect here, Mark Burritt, and then also Chris Mays, who's with the Aquarium um, Board of Directors. He's the president. So that you guys are all familiar. So Mark, Chris, and I have been working on this. Mark and Chris have been working on it much longer than I have. I got involved in December, January, that about that time frame. Um, so they've been working on it. They have a lot, lot of um, insight into what the end user needs. That would be Chris, the architect's been working on other aquariums, has ideas about how aquariums should look, how they should function. So um, the other stakeholders that we have in this project are gonna be Judge Garza, of course, the commissioners, um, we have the navigation district because they are the property owners. The building, we lease the property from the nav district, nav district, so they have a, a say in what we do on the property and how it's going to look and all that future stuff. Um, the city of Rockport Community Development, Carrie was not able to join us today, but she did go ahead and send us Mike Donahoe, Mark Donahoe as her representative. And then the city of Rockport Historic District because we are within that overlay map that they have to keep everything going forward for their look for the future. And also the Rancis County Public is one of our bigger stakeholders. So here's a picture of the old aquarium, just because some of you may have forgotten what it looked like. It's been, I don't know, seven years or so. <laughs> um, and Marley, I believe he's gonna be coming back to us. Uh, see, he's awfully big. Oh, is he? Awfully big. Okay. So maybe I didn't know that that kind of thing was in our water, but now I don't want to go in our water anymore. <laughs> when I saw this slide, I saw the aquarium, and I I forgot how the old one looked, and I was like, oh, I love that one. <laughs> hey, leadership class thirteen, which yeah, I was proud yeah. member, did the graphics for that to bring more um, attention to the building. At the end of the harbor, so it's nice to see it again. It's a very charming building. What a sailor! <laughs> and then, of course, Hurricane Harvey. So this is what it looked like after Hurricane Harvey, and the destruction and the removal process. And so, right now, we have a proposed schedule, and this is going to be April of 2024. We're going to try to finalize and approve our designs this month. Um, we're going to get our packets ready for our um, to go out for bid 
bidding usually takes about 45 days and that's give or take some. And then we'll be able to select a contractor. We'll do a pre-construction meeting with <laughs> our contractor and the navigation district will be part of that because we are on their property. Um, in August, we will um, secure, start securing some aquarium. I know we have some aquarium equipment already ordered, paid for, mm -hmm. paid for, ordered, um, but we need some additional equipment. So we'll start getting on board with getting some fundraising, what we can do to secure some more equipment. And then we'll have the groundbreaking, and that was recommended like right after Labor Day, because we have so much going on in that area during the summertime, we don't want to have construction. We kind of learned a few lessons out on Bayview during spring break. We had a lot of people climbing on the equipment. Bayshore, I'm sorry, Bayshore. We had a lot of people climbing on the equipment. So really the grand opening would be spring. Um, if we can make March, that would be great for spring break. If we can't do it till May, we're not going to push it. We're not going to try to hurry things along and, and come up with a cluster. So um, these are, this is the exterior views of the current design for the building. Okay. <clears throat> and then here are some interior views. And I do have the plans here for anybody who would like to see them or if you just want to look at the um, overviews. Are we, Ella, are we going to have more uh, exhibition area in, in the proposed aquarium than we did in the old one? That's a great question yeah, for Chris. It's very <laughs> Um, Mark? With the addition of restrooms, we will lose some space. Okay. But in comparison to the old building, it's mm -hmm. about the same. About the same. Yeah. yeah. It'll just be fresher, newer, and the ceilings yeah. will be higher, so it'll feel yeah. bigger. And it'll have air conditioning. And that's a huge advantage over <laughs> what we had before. Because mm -hmm. it was hot in there in the summer. It was. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. What are you going to do to replace all that patina up there? The, the rust hanging around. And all all those things. Things. Now, in modern day, they call that patina. But it like rust we lost them. all those donations that you gave us, too. Steve yeah, I was kind of sad that I gave it to you after you let it get blown away. It was sad. <laughs> <laughs> and so you can kind of see... That's what's right going, but... So we have the deck area, which connects the two buildings together, so that... Aquarium Education Center and the aquarium will be joined together. It will basically be used to do a one, be opened at the same time at all times, correct? That's, that's the plan. The plan. Mm -hmm. So that's, that deck is a lot bigger than, than what we originally looked at. We looked at just a, like a walkway. You know, like a, I think the first plan that I saw was just a, a walkway wrapped around. That, that's nice. Mm -hmm. And we have uh, grant funding for our deck. And our hope is that we have enough grant funding for our deck at the moment. And these are just more interior shots. Um, you can kind of see, I don't have a pointer on here. No, no. But up in the very right-hand corner, that's where um, the cashier would be. That's where the merchandise would be. The red area that shows you um, some static displays, tables for static displays, and then all the rest of the stuff is aquariums throughout the building. And again, here's our grant funding for our approved for decking that we already have. So it's already been secured. We have those funds. We don't have to worry about getting that. Do we um, have to go back and get so the funds going to be adequate? So many times we get a grant or get funds and it turns out we, we don't have enough. Yeah, it, it may not be enough. We don't know until we start actually going out and getting our pricing and getting our contractor. It's a very hefty, it's a hefty amount of money. So hopefully it will cover everything. And if not, we'll just have to, the county will have to make that up in some way. Are we gonna, are we gonna do any fundraisers? Uh, to, and one thing about fundraisers is if you do it, do it and do it right, it makes the public feel more like ownership and, you know, it's more personal them at that time. Uh, I know uh, we did that in cities and, and you know, funded as much as we could with with grant funding, but anything extra was, uh, was from public contribution and we never had a problem with it. Mm -hmm. And so that's really, I guess, something that the board, the aquarium uh, board would be doing, working on those fundraisers. I don't believe that the county would be a part of that. So. 
Um, and this is just because we added those two single occupancy restrooms. And this just gives you the statute in the 2020-12 International Building Code. So you can see um, our occupancy for the building is 89 people. So one water closet for 125 is great for men. Um, one water closet for 65 women. So you got to think there's going to be a mix. It's not going to be all women in there. It's not going to be all men in there. So with this, we definitely have the capacity we need for the size of our building. And pension, because the two buildings will be used together, we'll have the um, education restrooms to also use for when there's like field trips and those kind of things going on. And that just shows you the location of the two restrooms. So they're actually behind in what I would call the background area of the building, but not where the displays are at, to save room. But if people go to the restroom, will there be some sort of a dividing wall or a door so that if the other is used as storage by the aquarium board funds, that you won't have people back there or kind of looking through t-shirts or anything like that? I mean, that's just something to think about. Yeah, we've kind of people that. that common space. Yeah. We we located the, the bathrooms in an open area where the um, materials are received, and we're thinking of a, just a, some sort of a, a, a block uh, of the passageway to the rest of the back of house. So the only place they can is right in the middle room. That's where the bathrooms are. There's nothing to sit in there. Okay. And again, here's just the 89 people. That's our capacity. And do you know what the occupancy was on the other one? Well, did it have one? It didn't have one. Okay. It did, and um, there were some Saturdays that we might have oh, exceeded that. Yeah. <laughs> but no tickets are going to be written now. Yeah. Right. Your secret secret. <laughs> <laughs> and so, one of the things that I was going through when I was um, talking with people in the community about the aquarium. Um, when I talked to the city, I found out that we had not received um, the certificate of appropriateness for our building from the city of Rockport. So that was one of the things that really started the conversations of, um, is the exterior of the building going to pass? If it, and what basically I was trying to figure out, like, do I take it to commissioner's court first or do I take it to the um, city of Rockport Heritage District? And that's where my conversations kind of with Carrie were kind of leading. So um, Mike is here to really talk about that a little bit um, and what could happen and our process for that. Um, and that was just a picture to show you where it's actually located. We're actually in the harbor part of it. And then here's their um, timeline, their checklist. Sure. I was talking to the architect. I had to ask him what the hell he was doing. And uh, he, he kind of <laughs> told me, no, uh, this is not going to be a problem at all. Uh, you had a metal building there. You're putting a metal building back. The certificate of appropriateness is just a simple uh, two-page little form that you check, and it's very easy Uh that, you know, whatever colors he wants to put on the building and everything to dress it up and things like that. So there, there shouldn't be an issue at all. This is a formality, basically, uh, depending on, you know, if somebody comes in with an extravagant building, they're doing something different, it gets a little bit more convoluted. But we'll fill this out. Uh, my thought is we'll probably take it to city council just for approval, just so we can get a little bit more publicity for the project and everything and show the community that we're all working together. We've got the NAB district, the county, and the city all supporting this project and everything. So th this is just a formality. So don't, so don't we won't have to put brick or anything. No, no. Like yeah. some of the other. There's a there's a thing in, in the Heritage District Overlay Code that calls for a tripartite. It's a three piece or three different style facade on the front of the building. We can do a, a little variance for that, and it will be approved. I can tell you that. And then um, what did the other thing was the pro proposed signage plan? Yeah, and again, uh, I don't know what your idea is on signage, looking at the old aquarium and everything where they had, you know, what letters up on the building and everything. Are we looking at something similar? To the exterior. Um, so the signage for the actual building is on the building. There, yeah. oh, there it is. Yeah. But then if we wanted to have any, like, display marquee signing on the education center kind of similar to what they have at the maritime museum right where they have where you can put right a scrolling like, message or something like that yeah, yeah where they have there shouldn't be an issue there just come in and uh there's a sign permit that has to be gotten and stuff like that okay so we need to get a sign permit okay. yeah. 
But having that big sign out there made all the difference when we put it on the old one. Because it used to be hard to find. And mm -hmm. once we put it up over the top, not on the new display, but on the old one, that really brought people down there. Because then no matter where you were within the harbor, you could, you could see, see it. it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I believe, Chris, there's, you still have the crab? I looked for it the other day, and it was not where it used to be. So that is, I'm not sure. It used to be under the education center, and it's no longer there. Okay. It wasn't that big, and I, I've i had some ideas about that we could discuss. Okay. Okay. And so um, basically for the review checklist for the county, and this isn't in any particular order, um, these are just the people that I, off the top of my head, I was like, these people need to look at the plans. They need to um, kind of like sign off on the plans and be like, you know, like IT needs to be able like, we have the right data for what the end user needs so that we don't come back at the end and be like, oh, we don't have an outlet there. Or we don't have data there. So really it's gonna be, what does the board want? What do they want in that building? And are we gonna have the right kind of data in there? Are we gonna have the right um, telephone system in there? Those are the additional things that I think we all need to like think about right now as we're going through the process of approving the plan so that it doesn't come back and we don't hear that or change order. We don't want to hear change order. So, <laughs> and I don't know, like, I'm like, okay, I, those are the nine people I thought of, or the nine groups of people that I thought of. Somebody's missing. I don't know who that is. So if you guys think of it, send me an email. Let me know who I'm missing on this checklist. And then these are the owner provided items that are, that are going to cost us additional. So these are not included in the scope of work that the contractor is going to do. So landscaping, um, the reimbursements for printing, the permitting fees, these are all additional things that on top of whatever the building costs, the county's gonna have to put the bill for these. I'm sorry. No elevators though, right? No elevators on this one. And again, there's probably something I'm missing. So if you go through the PowerPoint and you see something and you're like, well, what about this? You didn't put this in there. Let's get that in there. And you, know, you can see the exterior and the interior signage. That's something that the county needs to pay for at the end. Do we need any special permits in order to run an aquarium or like licenses or environmental sign offs? The, um, there's probably a TCEQ discharge permit, which we can get. And we should have a um, permit to house a uh, game fish. Um, I don't call exactly what it's called, but it allowed us a certain number of small spotted sea trout, undersized red drum. Um, so, I mean, being sport fish protected by Texas Parks and Wildlife, I can I can facilitate those probes. I forgot you work for it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know who does those. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one thing is chemical storage. Probably going to have to have uh, game SDS sheets, uh, you know, a plan with with with, with regard to your chemicals. Because yeah. if we have a chemical leak, you know, the harbor is where it's going. So we have to be prepared for that. Yeah, as far as I know, really, the only chemicals of concern would be leach. No, we don't need any fire suppression or anything like that on the inside of the building. I don't think so. What's the squirt? Nobody's the sleeping in there. It's not required by code or okay. farmer. Mark, what was the square footage? Mike was asking. Oh, goodness. We should know that. It's <laughs> approximately 5,000 square feet. That sounds about right. And again, if you, anything that I'm missing, please send me an email so I can um, get that to you. What kind okay. of, what kind of scanner are we going to put on it? Well, currently it is metal building panels because the original building was contracted as a replacement by the insurance company in kind. So we were lim I was limited to a metal building uh, versus other materials. So what I've done is instead of, I've attempted to dress it up as much as I can within those constraints. And I'm looking, we're looking at horizontally applied uh, reverse rolled M panels, okay. two different colors, um, and that's about as fancy as I could get. Now, what about what about the painting? Or are, are the panels going to be uh, treated against a salty atmosphere? Or yes. Okay. 
they are they are, that has been that has been covered. Yes. Okay. And is it the framing is it bolt together or welded or? It's it's both actually, but that's really um, as designed by the engineer, the engineer for the pre-engineered metal building company. Mm -hmm. They do the design on the structure, and I've given them a concept and all the sizing constraints and angles and stuff like that. As far as the details and how they connect, that's, that's up to them how they do it. So do you expect uh, galvanized framing on the inside yes. since it's on the water? It is, I believe it is spec galvanized, yes. I mean, every, I have checked every material inside, outside that I can check and mm -hmm. like the light fixtures, the, the paint on the columns supporting the, the deck and um, just we have protected them to the max as far as I can, I can tell. Are the parking spaces where they are now where pretty much where the parking design is going to continue to be? Yes. Yes. Okay. Solve that problem. <laughs> we we haven't touched the parking. It, it's all shared parking out right. there, uh, right. Jack. Uh, what's good about that is Park and Wildlife when they're at their busiest time. Um, you know, it, they don't have a lot of cars out there uh, during these after events. That's generally when everybody else has got off work. So the shared parking out over there has, has worked pretty well. Okay. Now, other events that happen, like what's coming up with Nautical Flea and others, you know, parking gets a little tight. But overall, we've we've made it pretty well down there um, with the park. And on this um, picture, this is just showing basically the structure in that, that top area, because there's actually a storage. So where the offices are underneath, there's a storage on you can climb up the stairs. And it can only be used for storage. You can't put offices up there. <clears throat> and then while we're doing this project, we're also going to do some um, upgrades to the aquarium <laughs> education center. So we're going to add in both of these buildings, they're going to have security cameras on the inside, on the outside, so that we can see what's going on. Um, we're going to put some reliable internet service into both of the buildings. Um, and then, I don't know, we need to like, talk about it and really start like thinking, what do we want to do in that education center? What would be some additional items we would like to... The, the security cameras, where are they going to be monitored? At, all, at LEC? Probably. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So they'll be on the same system that everything else is in in the county. Okay. Are there plans to put a, some kind of a winch lift system for the storage section? Because we have stairs and you have storage up there. It's a safety issue carrying stuff up and down stairs and, you know, having some kind of a long type of winch system to. Yeah. We hadn't discussed that. And a lot of what's probably going to be hard up there are my goods, T-shirts, stuffed animals, things for the gift shop. So not heavy. We wouldn't put pallets of salt up there, for example. I was thinking just going up and down. But yeah, and up down the hands. Yeah, we we hadn't discussed that. Yeah. It's because you have younger knees than some of us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the reason I'm bringing it out because I don't want to be worried about the structural design. You need to try to put some kind of wood system. It wouldn't be a heavy one anyway, I would imagine. But it's still one would like to. Uh, bulky clothing boxes and stuff like that. So it would be a minor adjustment to the structure. What uh, what are we gonna how are we going to ha uh, handle handicap? The building is fully uh, accessible, compliant. Are we gonna be a are, is the deck gonna be a, off the floor? I mean off the 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 surface and it's so how are we gonna get up there? It's it's off the paving surface in order to have the deck match the elevation of the building slab which is set by the flood control district at, right. at a minimum. Right. And so the there's an existing handicap um, accessible ramp that's not going to be adequate anymore. So the plans call for that ramp to be demolished and a new ramp built. And often the plans have the design details for the new ramp okay. to make sure it's all accessible. Okay. And that ramp is kind of located over the education center is. Yeah, I figured that's where the that most logical place, I think. Which were the old ones? Mm -hmm. Us older guys need that ramp sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> so that was really my presentation about the aquarium. Just wanted to get everybody's input, um, comments now before we move forward so that Mark has the opportunity to go back, um, implement the changes that we would like, and then come back with a great 
um, project for us. And then also one of the other thing was like, if we have any other future and just thinking ahead, like what other future projects do we want for the community? Yeah, I, would, I would highly recommend that the board consider uh, uh, seeking some local funds because just like the education, uh, just like the art center, you know, uh, a lot of people, you know, that's not the city art center, that's not the county art center, that's the art center, you know, it's, yeah. and, the, and the people that gave to that and everything are very protective of that. And I think that long term, that always makes public facilities much easier to uh, fund, and also it uh, it also gives a lot of pride to the community. So this, I mean, I mean, what other community our size has an aquarium? Right. You know. I mean, yeah. And there are there are lots of people in this community who are vested in this aquarium. When I go out, they're always asking me questions. They always everybody has comments that they want to provide to me about it. So this is the chance for us to just talk about that. Um, and then as far as the fundraising, that would definitely be down to the board. Right. Um, what Chris and his board want to come up with, you know, I think that there's lots of opportunities with all of these large companies around here, you know, like Chenier and Valero and all the ones that we have, Exxon, that would be happy, I think, to donate towards a aquarium, one of those large size aquariums and put their name on the front of it like they do down in the Czech Corpus State Christi. Christi. Yeah, Corpus Christi. If, it's I, just, if I can speak to that, Commissioner, we've had a history of very generous and wonderful partnerships right. with Nystrom Foundation, Ed Rochelle Foundation, and at least a hundred of our local businesses, including, um, well, more than a hundred uh, private donate donors, and mm -hmm. we used to have memberships to the aquarium, right? Um, and I, I mean, the Nystroms were reaching out to me on a yearly basis for four years following the hurricane, and they did donate following the hurricane to help me with the FEMA grant. Mm -hmm. um, but we stopped taking donations because there was just, I, I was personally very uncomfortable continuing to ask for money without a, 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 a timeline, mm -hmm. uh, an idea of moving forward. And so... I, mean, I think these in, these these folks are still out there ready to help. I don't foresee that to be too much trouble. That's good. As soon as we have a a, a notice to proceed or a, a, you know a, a commitment from all of the individuals that can make this happen, I'm going to be the first one in line reaching back out to our partners. So good deal. Yeah. So from here, where are we going? This isn't an action item today. You're giving us information, and I really appreciate it mm -hmm. because, like you said. We don't want to see any change orders, and we don't want to have the nightmare that we have. What else? So going forward, when are we going to say, okay, this is it? Start going out for the RFPs. So I think right now at this meeting, everybody needs to just kind of brainstorm, give ideas about what they want, would like to see the building, how they would like to see it going forward. I did brought a couple of samples. Somebody asked me about the shell crete from the um, courthouse. So I did bring a sample of the shell crete so you could look at it, touch it, whatever. And then we also have, this is actually the decking that we are gonna be using. And this is the actual color. So um, that just gives you a chance to, cause we know those things, like we know the decking is already paid for, taken care of. Um, so you can see that that's gonna be termite resistant, which is very important right now. Um, yeah, that's what we have. Resistant, yes. yes. It's important, but I don't know why. Yeah, this is the time uh, we're asking for your feedback. Right. You're happy with what you see? <clears throat> I mean, we can, that's easy. We can just move forward. I'm happy with the design. If we had, had to change because of the historic district downtown, I thought having it with a look similar to the Accordion Education Center and the NAP District's building, like the Coastal Cottage. But if we can go with this design, it's done, it's different, but it's very eye appealing. It's, it's a beautiful building. Uh, Phil, what else is left before you could, we could put on commissioner's court? Is there anything left? I mean, could we, could we put it on the next or sometime in the very near uh, future? It would be on the August 22nd commissioner's court. April, I'm sorry. I think it's like he's like oh, no, we're not, we're not, we're not, no. Yeah. no, you know, if we're all in agreement and we like the way that things look and nobody has any feedback, um, then we'll definitely get it on the April twenty second for it to 
be approved by commissioners, and then we can start moving forward with the RFP. We're not all in agreement because we can't all be in agreement on anything workshop. But, but, uh, well, but yeah, I was saying. You, Nick, talked about some sort of a lift or some sort of device to help get things up there. Yeah, and so those are things that we need to talk about and go back to. And if that's something that Mark, we feel like that needs to be part of the plan, then Mark needs to go back and need to add that. That's what he needs to do now in these next two weeks, because we have two weeks until that next commissioner's report. So if that's something that we want to have done, then we need to get that going. Yeah, so we'll consider like, like a power and stuff for a generator. Yeah, and we do need a hurricane survival plan for this pitch. Well, we, I've got that. Um, so what we did was we just open was, the drain and put it back where they came. Most from. of them actually can do that. Except the, except we have the, yeah. yeah, and the eel, we we um, we borrowed some parks and wildlife all land equipment and fill out and hauled it to the Texas State Aquarium. I mean, hours before the storm hit, it was fairly heroic. And then after the storm hit, um, as you all may recall it, it got a lot bigger than we expected. And when we came back around, there were still some fish left behind. And in fact, the only fish that we're aware of that we lost were the exotic lionfish and they had left from their aquariums and <laughs> expired on the floor. So as far as we know, uh, all the fish that were able to be released were released. And Marley the eel was safely transported to Texas State Aquarium where he currently resides. Yeah, y'all so yeah. handled that amazingly. Well, yeah, we we'd like to avoid that again. I think is the, the after storm. We'd all like to avoid that. I mean, yeah, you shouldn't be in a building that's collapsed like that. Right. Um, yeah, that's 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 the easy part. Okay. And so you're saying Marley's not going to be able to possibly not be able to join us? Well, back? Marley is much larger than he was when we had. <laughs> he is currently in a huge aquarium. For us to design and care for him at the size he is now, we have to rethink our tanks. We don't have tanks to space for him. And <laughs> it would be risky to transport that eel as he is now. I think um, the answer is no. There will be a Marley too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, I don't think we know what part Mark is. is that what he did? That he broke yeah, the they continue to grow, and I mean, they weigh him over there periodically, and and he is in the best of hands, frankly, better, probably better than him. than what we could provide for him here in Rockport. We moved him in an emergency, and he did not take that well. He didn't eat for more than a month, and we were we were worried about about him, and eventually they got him to come around. Because he was very babied while he was here. I mean, we we would hand feed that eel in front of spectators, you know. Um, but I, frankly, in my humble opinion, I think it would be a mistake to move him. I think it'd be very risky, and it would be very tragic if we moved him and Somehow. it didn't work yeah. out. Yeah, where he was in in good hands. How much uh, does he weigh now? Last I heard, I think he was up at thirty kilograms, which was a year or more ago. So, I mean. That's a big eel. A what big did he eel. weigh when y'all took him over there? I don't or remember. About I mean, he was only this big around. Oh, okay. Phil managed him by himself pretty much. And so what are the hours for the aquarium? Well, that's all negotiable moving forward. Uh, if, if memory serves, we were open Wednesday through Sunday from 1 to 5. 1 to 4, 1 to 5, 1 to 4. So part-time, uh, five days a week. And we would also do extended hours during spring break and on long weekends. We'd be open all day long. Uh, and what were you, the last year? Weren't y'all at about thirty thousand visitors? Over we the in twenty sixteen we we set our visitation <laughs> records over thirty seven thousand people through the door. Mm. Um, and in twenty seventeen we were on pace to break that record until August twenty yeah. fifth. 
Well, the calls never stop to our office inquiring about when the career is going to open. Yeah. And a lot of these are coming from schools and school districts, mm -hmm. right? Because that was on the field trip trail. Yeah. Uh, they would spend a few hours at the aquarium, then they would come over and spend another couple hours at the Bay Education Center, and then spend the rest of their afternoon on the beach before they would go mm -hmm. home. And there's so many people from so many different school districts. Sometimes I would ask my ladies, Google that place that's on the side of the bus. Where is this little town? Because they're, they're coming from everywhere, mm -hmm. especially from dry land country out by Freer and some of the areas to the west of us who really want to take in the coastal, uh, I guess, our region. And the aquarium was a big part of that. And, and I know they want that back especially after we just come out of spring break, yeah. it was even more evident that people are still uh, wanting uh, the, uh, the aquarium. So it, it's been a, a long time in coming. I, I know it's seven years, and seven years seems like a very long time, but there was a lot of work that took place just to get us to where we are now. Oh, yeah. The agreement <laughs> we had to facilitate with Parks and Wildlife to carve mm -hmm. out that piece of land so the county could lease it so that new building could be on their own leased property instead of a sub from, from the county to the Parks and Wildlife back to the district. So carving that piece out was the first important uh, you know, key to the puzzle to make this building actually become reality. Also, moving the building, a lot of people don't realize the building's moving 15 feet to the east. That's to facilitate a road to get back in behind the Parks and Wildlife and the aquarium. A lot of people don't realize Parks and Wildlife has a big uh, fuel tank back there that they need to fill to service all of their, their boats. Uh, the way the aquarium was before, uh, parking always filled up the, the path to get behind there. So every time the fuel truck come, it was blocked by, by cars and, and, and patrons to the uh, aquarium. So moving the building over 15 feet, carving out that location to be able to get the service trucks in behind was part of why the deck became reality, to tie the deck over to the aquarium building to allow uh, movement between both of the buildings. All of those things kind of came in time and evolved from when the hurricane uh, hit and knocked down the old building. Uh, but I will say, L, the, the NAM district has already voted to approve the existing plans. They also agreed that if you was going to put it in the restroom, the ones that brought, you know, raised our hand and said, hey, you got a building of this size, how could you not have a restroom in it? Particularly with, with school age kids. Yes, because we, we get them. <laughs> mm -hmm. And we realize what happens when you have that many kids that just got off a bus from an 80 or 100 mile uh, bus ride. So not having restrooms is is a key feature. And so adding that, I thought, was was great. But one thing uh, from the architectural standpoint that I think you need to really look at is how we're going to get into that sump tank to pump that that wastewater uh, into our into our uh, lift station. Uh, make sure all that works well with sizing and and pump sizes and, and distance that we have to pump. That's just small details, but a detail that we need to work out so you don't have a change order in the end. Okay. Thank you. So it sounds like not too many changes need to be made in the plans as they now are. And hopefully it can come to us in two weeks. And I just, I want to ask Chris to make sure you're looking at the plans. Make sure that everything you need is there. The exterior access is there. I don't know if you need a garage type door. I, I'm, if it's on there, make sure you have the plugs where you need them. If you need a plug for a register, I can yeah. That's, I mean, if you just, we, um, and thank you for for bringing those points up. We we worked initially very very hard to make sure that we tried to accomplish all those things. Okay. You know how it is with plugs in your house. You, there's always one where, you know, you probably didn't need it in that floor plug. It's never where you really yeah. wanted it. Yeah. But but we put enough in there that we, we are confident that it'll be fine. Um, you know, there are a lot of details that may not necessarily show up on an architectural rendering of the plans, right? And as, as you've mentioned, sometimes, you know, you're looking at these plans on a fairly small screen. It's hard to see all the details. But... You know, we've talked a lot. Uh, for, so is uh, the floor in the building, is it flat? 
The floor, yes. Because I grew up in the seafood business with a building right on the water. And I'm going to tell you what, we, we had a beam around our building, but we had slope on the floor where we could take a high-pressure hose after a hurricane and wash the mud out. Yeah. And, you know, you're in an area where in a, a lot of times a normal hurricane you would get water up in and brings mud in and everything. And we, like I say, we designed ours where we had slope and we washed it out the back door with a big hose that we had. And you could, you know, in a short period of time rather than scooping it up and all that stuff. So I don't know, I might think about uh, something like that. And yeah. also, too, that on the electrical side of it, uh, uh, probably already have taken this into consideration, but. You need different uh, on the plugs and stuff. You really need to get with Carrie Dietrich, uh, and uh, she will, you know, help you decide, you know, how high off the floor they need to be. I mean, they don't need to be fourteen inches. They need, probably need to be forty-two inches. But they, you take each one of them and look at it and see what where you can comfortably get to the outlet, and uh, uh, that it just makes that's that's so interesting. Yes, we we spent a lot of time on that, and as directed by the owner, what call you the owner? Uh, we use all the aquariums behind the, all the aquariums. All the plugs behind the aquariums are set up in proper heights okay. for, for access. And those plugs are are not limited by the constraints of the ADA, other than those fourteen fifteen inches, because they're servicing equipment. Right. So we can do that. Right. <laughs> We have a process. We have a pre-development meeting, and I think it would be good to sit down uh, whenever y'all are ready after you go out for your your bids and such, and we can have a pre-development meeting. We can sit down, go over everything, all the required inspections and those kinds of things with the contractor. We get this filled out and we can go from there. But like I said, it's a simple process, but it makes sure that everyone is on the same page. And uh, listening to you talk earlier and everything else, I'm just assuming that the, the package, the metal deal, when it comes in, it's all windstorm rated and things like that. That's generally just standard procedure, but we'll, we go through all that to make sure. It is, yes. Yeah. <clears throat> and then Renee? Same thing with the slope on the, <laughs> the drainage and the... <laughs> yeah, I wanted to make sure that Renee had an opportunity to come in because they are going to be the ones who are taking care of the... The building you know they're doing the facilities they're going to be the air conditioning unit they're going to be taking care of all that so i think it's important that she has a say a voice in what's being put into the building also as far as i thought the the slope thing was kind of interesting because you were talking about just you know yeah i can show you floor. i can show you that in a in a building but it but i don't know if it tanks yeah and then the other thing was um the mop sink you need a closet for a mop sink to be somewhere by those restrooms so that they can leave their stuff there and have storage so that they can have the toilet paper and be able to clean out that those restrooms. It's code, I guess. Yeah. A janitor's closet. <laughs> a janitor's closet. Yeah. yeah, a janitor's closet with a mop. Not thing. much of a request to not have to clean it yourself anymore. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> hey, with it, we'll still have plenty of cleaning to do, but you know, you know that's I mean, we expect to have to clean up after ourselves, but maintenance yeah. and that sort of thing is important. Yeah. We mentioned earlier backup power, and then we tangent it off on a different uh, fundraising thing. But the back, we have a backup power generator on site. Now it's currently mothballed um, because, you know. Nothing uh, back up right now. Well, it was busy running every Monday morning and the maintenance of it was eating me alive. And every time I turned around, the batteries were dead. And just not righteous. So that was that generator for the original equipment? Yeah, yeah. We we I thought it was for y'all's no, it, it it's adjacent and it it will need to be moved, gotcha. um, which I don't think is gonna be a huge operation, but it will need to be moved because that's where we're providing access for the diesel truck and to get behind the uh, Rockport Marine Lab. So we need to move that over. And the the is it it's a diesel? Yeah, no, it's uh propane uh Natural gas. LNG, natural liquid LNG. natural Yeah, it's 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 tight from the city. Okay. Um, so it doesn't run out of fuel, although it those pipes all cracked. Might want to, if we move it, may want to go ahead and convert it to propane, unless the city is not have to lose all the supply. Yeah. 
We just, that, but... we just recently um, had rent generators to power up our elections building, which supports uh, Collins emergency equipment for the EOC. There wasn't enough natural gas in the lawn, so they had to pump some in to get it during our last freeze. So that's not kind of a concern that we could lose power if we were to lose gas for any reason. Propane. Propane. Uh, if you get pregnant, you got to you know anchor the tanks and you know, be a certain distance away from from uh, the general public and everything. But we yeah, did that's that. That's a little tough down there when we're <laughs> so constrained on space. Okay. Yeah, where would we? Well, you you can put it where it predominantly has the breeze that takes it away. But uh, we recently just did. I say recently. It's been several years ago. Did one for the uh, for the uh, uh, mud district out in Lamar. And uh, it was. We thought it was going to be an inconvenience. It really wasn't. It was so easy to do. They did it in one day. So I make KDF KWs is the one you have. Uh, it's big enough to run the whole building. I don't recall exactly. I don't need to look. And it, again, it, it's probably going to need a round of maintenance. It's a. It's powered by a Vortec V6 gasoline engine, but it's set up to to run natural gas, which to convert to propane is a bidding. Yeah. yeah. There's nothing to that. Like that. But you've got to have a tank and that complicates things. Mm -hmm. At any rate, but that's there. Um, and and we would we would depend on that. Uh, that's that's an important part. Has the electrical scheme for a generator been considered in the plants? Electrical scheme for the generator is that put into the plan or is that just a for the emergency generator? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah because you'll need, a you'll need an you'll need an automatic transfer. Yeah, that pretty, pretty hefty project. Yeah, what's missing is the connection. Everything that was on the building left, and we couldn't get that off. All we have is the generator sitting there, and it and it was strapped. I think it was it was rated for a particular. Trying to think what if it was two phase or three phase, it, uh, it doesn't matter. We'll, we'd have a professional rewire that. But yeah. what we need on the building is the transfer switch. Yes, right. it needs to be automatic. Yeah, well, that, it's not on the plans currently. This is, it needs to be a yeah, it needs to be. I don't think we talked about this, but we can do it. Yeah, I always thought that generator was interesting. We almost donated it <laughs> we changed we have a portable one that we can plug into the marine lab that is mobile so it can move to other facilities and plug in and that was how we handled Where it was needed yeah yeah and that way it's not just there's not going to be a huge there's not going to be a huge draw on it because those uh the individual cycle pumps for the the water for the aquariums don't take oh and they're how we handle it with parks and wildlife hatcheries and you're going and you're going to use probably leds for lighting we don't run the lights in emergency you don't need them you just run bubblers and if you need heat you can run a heater uh, but i mean those are the two things is oxygenation you need bubblers mm -hmm. so right. you really just need to run the air pump yeah it's not that big a deal but what's nice about it if it's automatic and if we're sleeping in our beds and tower goes off. We don't Definitely. come in yeah. and There's find fish, fish suffering or, or whatever. They're on life support, you know, mm -hmm. and that's important to us to make sure that they're they're in good hands. So the, the transfer switch is important. I don't, I don't think that thing's going to require a great big generator. It, it, maybe a 25 kW. Or maybe. I think that's what's in there is, is what I recall, and that's probably more than sufficient. 25 kW running mm -hmm. a 4,000 square foot house. Oh, yeah, with AC on and everything and an oven. Yeah. So on the um, on the backup generator, remember when we had the freeze a couple of years ago? Yeah, you would have needed that for at least a week. Yeah, because we didn't have power. Yeah, to yeah. keep your yes. Yeah. And if, if it was yeah, right, and that was an extended period, which is unusual. But following the hurricane, you know, we were in similar mm -hmm. similar circumstance. Of course, we didn't use it. Then. Not <laughs> <laughs> that gas line broke too. It made a boy, it stunk. Oof. But in a freeze, we definitely need it. Yeah. You don't want to run the heat down. So I want to freeze. Like. <laughs> People's toilets froze. Wow. 
they say whenever Santa Ana crossed the Rio Grande to come to the Alamo, they walked across on It's not inconceivable. <laughs> it's frozen solid. Yeah, yeah, it's not inconceivable. It would be unusual, yeah, but not inconceivable. Most of our breezes are just blows a couple of days, you know, enough to kill your plants. But just never know. Good to be proactive. And inside an insulated building and salt water, it's pretty resistant. Pretty resistant. Not such a big deal. Well, all right. Well, got anything else? I do not have anything else. Not just I'm grateful that everybody came and we had the opportunity to talk about it. So that there's not any, you know, like your backup generator. I hadn't thought about yeah. the fish needing to stay alive. So now it's your you. That's a good job. And that's the thing. Like, I'm just surprised what the more or less that we're looking right now. We don't, uh, we don't, we don't have a price that we don't have. Set up right. mm -hmm. No. We had a budget though. Was it a million? We so put how much in? Well, I we've got 1.5 in the budget itself okay. for construction. I mean, I don't know where we are. I mean, if that's enough or not or too much. Scratch that part out. Like, there's that yeah. little camera that's listening. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be surprised if that, though, you probably wouldn't be how many cup call and say, What's the budget? I never did. Oh, yeah. You'd you do right. your own pay <laughs> calls and you figure it out because if you do, it'll be right there at your budget. Oh, yeah. It's amazing how that works out. A little bit more. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Well, we need to move to adjourn. Yes. So moved. Second. <laughs> Commissioner Cat uh, Cheney. Aye. Commissioner Casterline. Aye. Commissioner Russo. Aye. Commissioner Dugnick. Aye. Judge Garza. Aye. We are adjourned.